All right, you guys, let me turn off my fan quick. Turn down the volume. All right, so I've been given permission to cast this last game, which 228 is playing versus Antares for the last uh, <laughs> sort of a third place match, just for fun. Yeah, I'm almost ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I am shouting at my housemates who are playing this match. Um, and we're going to cast this last one. Uh, I'm going to do it by myself. It's going to be a blast. Hopefully, we'll see some fun play. Uh, joining in right now. We're ready to go. I'm not sure what map they're playing on. I just started doing this right now. Crimson Straits. All right. Sorry for that sketchy start. Okay, so we have my team, the 228th IBR versus Antares Scorpions, and this is a off-the-books fun match for third place in the PGI tournament. Doesn't count for anything, but they're still doing it to have fun. I hope that the settings are all okay and that you guys can see me just sort of see the stream just fine. I don't want it to be messed up. Okay, you're going to see how sketchy my movements are compared to Phil's on the stream. So let's see how this goes. All right, it looks like we see Antares has actually started on the northern spawn. They are uh, going to be very, very spread out to start with, which is kind of a problem, but not really. And let's make sure I can click on people. No, nah, I can't for right now. Okay, so let's zoom up way high. Uh, we see that the 228th has spawned south side. They have brought a pack of four Jenners. Uh, looks like they have brought five Dragon Slayers and two Cataphracts compared to Antari Scorpions, who have brought, looks like, a couple Embers, a pack of Shadowhawks, three of them to be precise, uh, Cataphracts, and just a few Dragon Slayers. Looks like they are regrouping right now. They are moving towards that upper platform area, whereas 228 is scouting out the uh, far right side of the map from their position, trying to go for a little bit of what Lords went for, just making sure that they make that nice slow approach. Try and use this spectator cam to get back into a first person view so I can get you guys that scoreboard. All right, so there we see the teams. It is in fact 228 has not done their lances. I will make fun of them about that later. <sighs> All right, so. It looks like Antares is still getting these last few mechs up onto the top. They are scouting with uh, an ember. It looks like two embers, in fact, are moving up onto the top of that hill. Tricepticon from the 228th in blue is moving up on the other side, trying to make sure that they know exactly what's going on. Uh, these light mechs are going to see each other a little bit, and we see a few PPC shots going down from uh, Antares Scorpions trying to get some last hits on 228. An arty strike goes down. Very minimal damage by the look of it. Actually, uh, almost no damage, 99%. Most of that's just from jump jetting. All right, 228 is taking up a fairly defensive position along this line. They're going to use this to try and snipe onto that upper platform. The two lights from Antares, however, are still on the top of the mountain. Excuse me. Doing the best they can to get scouting done and probably good air arty. But 228 is now pushing forward. They're going to try and push their advantage, but they do this as Antares is actually pushing over the ridge, trying to get behind them. So you're going to see a little bit of that ring around the rosy play that we normally see on maps like Caustic and Terra Therma, where you're trying to circle around using that right side for cover. So uh, 228 is actually getting a little bit spread up. We see a couple of mechs in the back here. Queen Blade and Ragnar are uh, slightly out behind, as well as Jizine. Titan Osis and a Jenner is the last remaining mech, but that's a light, so he'll catch up quickly. Uh, we see three Ember actually from Antares holding on top and one of them looks like it's taken some decent arty damage he's at 77 percent that is uh Captain Baxton let's zoom in and see what his actual components are like once I can find him on this list 77 percent oh he is actually fine that is just orange armor all over uh weak for a light but not end game worthy he's not going to get headshot anytime soon so these uh, it looks like Antares is now circling around doing exactly what the 228th has done earlier, and so they will be moving uh, towards the outside, whereas 228, it looks like, is trying to chase them down. They're not holding on our, the platform for very long. Oh, I take that back. They have turned around. They are moving back. They're going to try and take this platform. Uh, we see Titan, Osis, and Panic Button. Panic Button being the DC for the 228th, uh, holding this edge, making sure that they know exactly where Antares is. This Ember, again... Uh, I should learn how to pronounce that name. Captain something or other. 
Captain Byaxon. Byaxon, that's what we'll call him. Captain Byaxon in this Ember is the weakest member currently for Antares Scorpions. Uh, moving out in front, getting a little bit of scouting information done. We see an Arty Strike go down on 228. Another one coming, but it doesn't look like anybody has taken a ton of damage currently. So uh, it's going to be a pretty decent fight. Alright, it looks like we've reached the point where both teams are just kind of happy to take a second take some decent shots at each other. No kills have gone down. Both teams are fairly even on damage. We see Ragnar at 87% in a Shadowhawk. Uh, looks like they're just going to snipe for a little bit. Not the high octane game we had between SJR and the Lords, but still an equally fun game to watch. Uh, Arty Strike goes down, quite a bit of damage. Uh, Shredhead goes down to 82% in his Shadowhawk. Uh, it looks like Antares is taking their equal amount of Arty Strikes, but not nearly as much damage. Oh, this Dragon Slayer, though. McHarg is actually down to 67%. Let's check out what his loadout is. That can be very dangerous for a mech that that's that important with that much damage to give. And that rear torso, that's probably an XL engine. So if he gets in a brawl with a light mech, that could be very hazardous to him. We see Cataphracts and Dragon Slayers for Antares sniping. An Arty Strike goes down behind him. No significant damage. Uh, Artie is continuing to be traded back and forth from both teams. This is a pretty good uh, spot for... I, I want to say Antares is actually in this situation. Looks like they're getting better Artie strikes down. 228 is far more clustered. But, man, I have to say it looks like the damage actually is slightly in favor of 228. Uh, Artie goes down, a little bit more damage on Park, uh, but nothing, uh, nothing end <laughs> game ending yet. Zoom out a little bit, get the bigger picture. Queen Blade for the 228 is scouting that top of that hill. We actually see that already way off in the distance that was aimed directly at him. Miss, and he is uh, still safe at 99% on top of that hill. Couple, uh, three embers actually from Antares holding in the background, making sure that they see if 228 pushes on them at all in the slightest. Um, the cargo is now down to 59% in that Dragon Slayer. That is getting close to dangerous areas. I mean, you can lose that left arm, but as soon as you lose one of your torsos, you're down in a Dragon Slayer, and then you reach that point where once you are down that one kill, you're only you're not only down one mech, but you actually have to push into your opponent where they get to choose where the engagement is. Uh, on the other side, however, we do see Tricepticon at 75% in a Jenner and Ragnar at 74% in a Shadowhawk, Versi at 71% in a Jenner. That light mech damage can be spread very, very evenly, but it's still something to pay attention to. Ooh, Avatar of what in a Cataphract down to 67. Let's see what his loadout looks like. Do, 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 do. If I can find him. And, oh, there he is. I'm just blind. Down to 65%. He is actually down one of his AC5s. So that's an AC5 TPBC build. And it looks like, uh, judging by his speed, which he's not currently using very much, I think that is also an XL build. That left arm has no components in it, but it does mean that he is going to be worse for wear. If he loses one of those torsos, he will actually go down. All right, let's jump back into third person and see if anything has developed. It looks like both teams are fairly content to just sit here and snipe. A lot of the 228 mechs, uh, the Dragon Slayers are very healthy, which is important. You see those Shadowhawks and a couple of the Jenners have taken a lot of damage, but those are the more expendable mechs in this composition. You do need the lights for later engagements, but the Shadowhawks are the ones that are meant to take the damage in case of a push. Oh, an airstrike goes down and it actually knocks Overrude down to 75%, a good hit from 228. Uh, McHarg is playing very cautiously down at 56%. He's off in the back. So it looks like uh, 228 is winning these trades, but both teams are fairly beaten up. We do see a few of the lights from Antares are down in the lower percentages, uh, similar to the 228. But uh, those are embers, so those are more heavy killers than they are light killers. So if there were to be a light engagement, purely light on light, I think the engagement would in fact go to 228. So we're just seeing a lot of shots being traded right now. Still no kills from either team, and both teams are uh, very happy to just sort of play this passive style. This game isn't on the books, it isn't actually for anything, but they are uh, they're still playing passive, still playing to win. And there are 7 minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. Uh, the car against Dragon Slayer is actually down to uh, internal components on his left leg. It looks like a couple of the Jenners from the 228 might actually be flanking around. Let's go check that out. Use the speedy cam. All right, we see Triceptic Triceptacon and Titan Osis in Jenners. Moving around the back. Oh, and there are just two embers here. And if Queen Blade jumps off the top of the mountain, they could get a really, really favorable engagement. 
Oh, and First Nix comes through the tunnel. So we're going to see a light fight here, and this could decide the first kill of the game. Uh, Captain Benson takes a lot of hits. Oh, he's down to 55%. Oh, and we actually see Max moving through the tunnel. I completely missed this push. 228 is moving through the tunnel right now, getting a really good advantage, trying to pick off these last remaining mechs, uh, these light mechs from Antares, while the rest of the Antares team is still back in the city trying to snipe the platform where they no longer are. A UAV goes up. And it looks like Antares is now getting to the fight. We see Jaisen in the Cataphract is actually lagging for behind, lagging behind for the 228, and he could get caught off. We see the first mech go down in that Ember from Antares. That means 228 is up on kills. They can now pick where the position happens, but it might be too late. They're falling back, but Antares is already on top of them, and they're going to have to brawl this out. Uh, Ragnar, Iron Arm, goes down into Shadowhawk. First kill of the game. Uh, the currently, score is tied 1-1. Man, this is going to be a good brawl. 228 is balling up on the right side. Antares is balling up on the left. They're going to meet right here in the middle around this city. Artie is going down on both sides. Shredhead jumps up a couple mechs off the edge trying to get a better advantage. We see one of those uh, Embers Gamer drops down from Antares. The scores is still even 1-1, one to one, but we see Jaisen in this cataphract. He does, in fact, get caught out. He gets picked off by Antares. Two mechs down for the 228. Oh man, this is just a fantastic brawl. Let's check and see exactly how much time is left. Five minutes and 30 seconds left in this game, and these mechs have got to go for kills. Titanosis takes down Gamer at the edge of the map, tying it up for 2-2. Oh, this brawl is fantastic. We see mechs shooting left and right. Dragon Slayer gets legged for 228, and the Embers are making fast work of these components. Defunct goes down. Current score is 3-3. This game is so close. And the brawl is solidifying. We see both teams have sort of picked their sides. We still see one uh, mech caught out. Uh, five Dog Knight in Ember is looping around in a light mech trying to distract these 228th players. Uh, man, this is such a close game. And we see more mechs have gone down. I missed a few. Uh, the current score is 3-6 to six in favor of the 228th, taking down a lot of these mechs. There must have been a fantastic arty right there. And another one goes down in front of Avatar. What? This could be a big kill. He's only at 65%. 62%. Oh, but the last strikes miss him, and we see these two Dragon Slayers from Antares moving out into the open. Current score is still 6-3. to three. Looks like 5 Dog Knight has been legged, and these lights from the 228th are going to make fast work of him taking him down in the water. 7-3 to three for the 228th. Looks like these two Dragon Slayers are flanking out as far as they can in the water, trying to get as much space as possible. Avatar of what? At 60% along the ridge. 228 mechs sniping him from this ledge in a great position. Oh, and two more mechs go down. 9-3 to three in favor of the 228th. Swarming in on Avatar of what? And his Cataphract 3D, 43%. He goes down 11 to 3 in favor of 228. The last mech standing is a Cataphract. Uh, no, yes, Overru. No, yes, baby. Rubidi in a Cataphract. He is the last mech, and he's taking a ton of fire, being completely surrounded by mechs, and he goes down 228th, takes the unofficial third place title for the PGI First Engagement Tournament Beta. Well done. They are my team. I am slightly biased. But I am glad I got permission to use this client. Cast one last game for you guys tonight. It'll go up on YouTube. I'll make sure everybody sees it. Well done to 228th, securing that third slot. We wanted that victory against Lords, but if we can't have it, we'll sure as hell take third. Good job to everyone. And I just want to give another special shout-out to everybody who's come to watch. I really appreciate the support that you guys have given to the community. It really means a lot to me and uh, everybody else. This is what we've got to do to keep the community growing. And it's been so much fun to cast these matches and be here for you guys. Hopefully next time I won't have to take silly time off to go play games. So I appreciate you guys coming out to watch. This has been a fantastic game, a fantastic tournament, and hopefully we'll see more of them down the road. Thank you very much for wa watching. I am the Raffle Waffle. This is my disgustingly painted cataphract that I use for the tournament. I love all of you, and I will see you next Thursday for the reboot of War Room now that we're done with me moving out of college and this tournament. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll see you later.